All right. And happy Father's Day to folks at home. And welcome to Independence's worship service for June 20th, 2021. Um, so uh, we had a birthday yesterday. And Mr. Alexander turned 12. And uh, so it was a great day. Any other birthdays this week? All right. Well, let us sing happy birthday to Mr. Alexander. Can we do that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Alexander. Happy birthday to you. Aren't you glad you got a mask on? So you can't see how fake red your face looks. <laughs> I, I understand that perfectly. Uh, let's see. Get a bulletin in front of you, Sean. <coughs> Here we go. All right. Uh, any other announcements for the good of the church or the community? Uh, I guess I have an announcement. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we're going to work on the yard sale on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. And if we don't finish, we are planning on the 17th. Well, we haven't really got the date, but we're planning on having it next. But Next month. And the get that stuff out of the church and get the church closed. Yes, ma'am. And also, this will be my last year working with the yard sale because I'm not able to do it. So if somebody else wants to take it over, fine. If not, we're going to give the rest of the stuff away at the end. Right. Okay. All right. And uh, folks at home, uh, you, many of you may not know this, but uh, the Independence Yard Sale is legendary. Um, all the surrounding communities know when, pre-COVID, when the yard sale was going to be every year. But uh, I'm not, it's not a skill set I have, but uh, thank God for it. Extraordinary. Uh, so uh, one, of her, one of her many talents. What's that, Eli? That's dad. That's dad. <laughs> Dad does the networking. You know what your dad said when I asked him about doing the website? He said, talk to April. She's the one that knows how to build websites. Your daddy's the one that knows how to make them get to everybody. <laughs> right? All right. Uh, any other announcements? All right. Well, let us... Jesus, to hear things I would ask him to tell.
The wicked will go down to the grave. This is the fate of all the nations who ignore God. But the needy will not be ignored forever. The hopes of the poor will not always be crushed. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come together today, and as a storm ravages across the southeast, we come today to talk about the storms of life. And the answer to those storms, it is you. It is you. Help us today, Lord, as we pray and sing and listen to the scriptures and the message to embrace you more fully. To embrace you more fully in our lives. There is always more room for you in our lives. Always. That's the way you make it work. That we can grow and grow and grow in you. And you in us. Help us to do so this day. Amen. Amen. Uh, so before I go to prayers, a quick announcement. Uh, we're going to start taking up the offering like we used to. And I uh, didn't want to spring it on you guys first thing this morning. <laughs> uh, and throw you off, but uh, so for next week, uh, let's start doing that. We'll incorporate that back in. You good with it? Okay, good, good, good. It was a request I received, and uh, I think we, I don't, I don't see any reason why we can't do it. Okay. Um, now to our time of joys and concerns. Are there any that uh, we can add to our prayer list this morning? Yes, three cards on the table back there to be signed as well to go out. Um, what I'm going to, you know, I, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, you know, that our card ministry is absolutely wonderful, and God bless you guys for doing it. Right. Maybe we should mention the preaching friends that lived up the road that passed away last Saturday. We didn't know it last Sunday morning. Who was that? Uh, his name was Milton, but he had a nickname, Preacher Pratt. Preacher Prince. Mm -hmm. He's buried right, right at Mount Vernon. Right, right up near the road up here at Mount Vernon there. I'd like to make a concern of these cards just for, to be helpful. I know to no bail or other people have to be calling back and forth. If you have a name, please turn it in to her, but also be sure and get the address to make it easier for her because she, she's good enough to pick your cards over and send them out. Shouldn't have to be calling back with and forward to try to get addresses and stuff. I know it'll help out everything. But you call to have addresses, so all she has to do is write the name and address down. Okay. Hey Beth, are you going out to get these? Yes. We have some. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll give them to you. Uh, Ivan, would you go get them? Uh, you got it? Okay, thanks, Dee. All right. Hey 
You made it. Just in time. Good to see you. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to lift up these families that are mourning the loss of their loved ones. We pray, Lord, that they may find peace in you and knowing that their loved one is with you. And we continue to pray for healing, Lord, for those on our prayer list. And you have been so merciful and brought healing to so many, but so many are still hurting. And we pray. We pray for them. In the name of your son, Jesus, for healing for these people, for these wonderful, wonderful people that all love you so much. Join me now in the prayer Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for the Holy Spirit found in your bulletin. Dear Heavenly Father, today, in this hour, at this moment, we are in a regular rhythm of letting you work within us. Here we rest from daily work. This is the moment our souls have been waiting for. Fill us to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ivan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Today's readings will come from 1 Samuel chapter 17. There are various verses. All right. The Philistines now mustered their army for battle and camped between Socho and Judah and Azekra and at Ephidamim. Saul. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet, and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor, and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servant of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. 
Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped a sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them all again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. The lion walked out toward David with his spear shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David. That you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, the lion yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. Then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. And our second reading will come from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1-13. to as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he said, In the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, and troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonment, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, 
I speak to you, I speak as to you, my children. Don't bring mind your hearts also. For the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Ivan. Good job. <laughs> Just did once. That was a lot. Ivan has tremendous faith. And um, something that we've learned through, at least I've learned through doing Disciple One with the family. And uh, so when I saw this reading, I was glad it was Ivan's turn. If it wasn't Ivan's turn, I was going to ask for Ivan to read that anyway. Um, so, so just a, a quick uh, children's church of you guys. So that rock, how, how big do you think that rock was that David hit him with? About that big, right? It's like, how could that little rock do any damage, right? What do you think, Eli? How big do you think that rock was? Yeah, about, about that big. Yeah, that rock was about that big. That's the size of rocks he flung with his sling. I used to have one. I, had a, I found one when I was at uh, the Philadelphia Charge, and I, I know I've got it somewhere. I wouldn't have thrown it away. I've just misplaced it. It's like, how do you misplace a rock? Well, your wife goes, what is he doing with this rock? Uh, <laughs> no, that's not what happened. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, but yeah, it was a really big rock. So, and these slings that they used back then, I mean, they could hurl these rocks really, really fast in a long way. So, uh, hit him right in the forehead, and as he said he was going to do, he said, I will cut your head off and feed you to the birds and the wild animals. He did indeed cut Goliath's head off with Goliath's sword. So, yes. Uh, so, uh, our next hymn is number 129. Give to the winds thy fears, and uh, you will certainly recognize this tune. You'll want to sing all our Christian songs. Yeah, seventy doesn't come up. Yeah, you gotta you gotta type in the G L. There we go. Thank you. One notch. There it is. <laughs>
be seated. Witness stories. God's been talking to you this week. Yes, yes? Hmm? No? Okay. We shall move on. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray today that the meditations of my heart and the words of my lips be yours and yours alone. And may this message about the storms of our lives be received, embraced, and shaped. Amen. Amen. So as you've heard me say before, we are in normal time, and the color for normal time is green. Uh, our pyramids are green. So green is also the color of life and growth in the plant world. And in this long season, this long season after Pentecost, is when we grow as well. We're not leaving Jesus behind. He, as he promised, is always in us when we believe in him. So now in this green season, my friends, we are embracing the Holy Spirit that was sent by the Father to be with and to empower us to become and make disciples for Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus' work is now being done by his body, the church. That's us. We are his body. We are the church. We are here to continue that ministry, his ministry, his love, and his invitation to the entire world. This is a time of disciple-making. This is our reason for being, my friends. This task we are given is glorious and is a source of joy to the very core of our beings. But it is not easy. It isn't easy because we live in a messy world and we are messy people. And stuff happens. That's the background of our text today. Stuff happens. Difficult stuff, tragic stuff, stuff that knocks us down and threatens to overwhelm us. This might be natural stuff like the storms in our gospel text that seem to come from nowhere and are indiscriminate in destruction. Or it could be human stuff, the way we mistreat, abuse, oppress one another simply because we can. Like the abuse Paul suffered when he that he recounts in 2 Corinthians. Stuff happens. With the green of spring comes the afternoon storms related to the heat and the unable, unstable atmosphere of constantly changing weather patterns. Jesus has been preaching and healing much of the day before we, our reading started today in the gospel. He has been preaching and healing much of the day and he's tired and he's ready to go. And because of the geography, it's not uncommon on the Sea of Galilee for storms to pop up just as this one did. Like the storms of our lives pop up. Bam! There it is, and we're in the midst of a storm. Unexpected bad news. Our car breaks down. A major appliance in our house fails. Someone loses a job. See here, though, Jesus uses the same words to calm the storm that he used to cast out demons. Be still, be quiet. This story, however, is not about the storm. The storm demands our attention, and it seems to be the major character, the biggest threat, the loudest voice. But it isn't a story about storms. It's a story about Jesus. It's a story about faith. It's easy to miss we are distracted when we're afraid. We lose hope. And often, one of the first things to go is faith. Belief in a loving God and hope in tomorrow and today. Now, the disciples get a pretty harsh reprimand from Jesus. Have you no faith? Maybe it had to do with how they woke him up. Hey, we're about to die here. Are you just going to sleep through it? Maybe if they just tapped him on the shoulder and said, uh, um, hi, hi, Jesus, uh, things have got a little crazy since you fell asleep. Could you lend us a hand here? It might have been different. 
But see, the problem really is, is they don't ask him to do anything. Did you notice that? They don't ask him to do anything. They don't say in Mark's version of the story, we need help here. No, they say, what they say is infinitely more offensive to Jesus. It is evidence that they have been dozing through disciple class and their minds wandering as Jesus, Jesus patiently walked them through his history and his mission. And worse than that, they miss the class motto, the mission statement, the center of everything. They forget the most famous verse in all the Gospels, for God so loved the world. So loved the world. Don't you care? They shouted in fear. See, they lost their grip on the main truth of Christ. Don't you care? To say don't you care to Christ is akin to shouting at birds in the air and saying, don't you fly? Or to the raindrops, don't you fall? Or to the sun, don't you shine? Don't you care, they said. Of course he cares. That's why he's there sleeping on a cushion, because he's exhausted from caring for everyone everywhere. Of course he cares. But in their panic, in their fear, they did not fall back on their faith. They forgot. They lost their grip on it. They lost their grip on him and thought only of their own lives. Their boat was already swamped, and they gave up. They gave up on life and on hope and on him. They gave up. Have you still no faith? It's easy to forget in the storms of life, to forget to hold on to him. Not because he will still the storm, but because he will stand by us in a swamped boat and in the crashing waves. He cares. And that is everything in the midst of a storm. That is everything in the midst of a storm. How many of you chose to be a Christian? I think we should all raise our hand. Or was it chosen for you is another question. Because I know most of the folks here grew up in this church. Many of you were raised here. And your choice to be a Christian, to be raised as a Christian, was made for you. But however, at some point in time, we all made the decision on our own as individuals to be Christians. Most of you, when you were confirmed. You see, Paul talks about this choice to be a Christian in the epistle, and he doesn't paint a pretty picture about being a disciple. Now today, we're not likely to receive 39 lashes for our belief, but there is persecution. I know that firsthand. And it usually comes from people, from people who profess to be Christians. You see, this task that we're given, being a disciple and making them, is worth the storms that will come. And the only way to survive the storms, my friends, is together. You see, together we claim relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and with each other. An individual decision we made to be part of the whole, to be part of the body of Christ, to be part of the church. Now the who to whom Paul speaks in the opening verse of the epistle and throughout this Corinthians reading is plural. You see, we choose as individuals to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And we become part of a family. We become part of a community when we choose this way of life, which means that we have support and we have resources when we face the storms of life. And we offer resources when someone else is struggling to find their feet when the wind blows. That's how we survive the storm, my friends. We do it together. We do it together. All of us, all of us have answered the call to be a Christian. 
And because we answered the call as an individual does not mean we are alone. It means we have joined the fold. The fold of believers and the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And because we believe in him, he and the Father are in us. The Holy Spirit is with us to bless us, to empower us, and to give us peace in the midst of life's storms. And now it is our time to care for others as Jesus cared. We are his hands and feet. We are his church. We are his rainbows. And it is up to us to provide the caring that he taught. It is up to us to provide the caring that he taught. This is the gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. To love God and to love one another. The gospel is not only about what he did, but it is about what we are to do. We are to do to be his hands and feet, to be his church, to be his body going forward. Rest on this truth, my friends, and you will be blessed. Amen? Amen, amen. Our closing hymn is number 465. Holy Spirit, truth divine, please stand as you are able. One notch, one bump. Please speak, truth divine, draw up on the soul of mine. Word of God in inward mind, wake my spirit. each week.